Right, thanks for joining me for this short um, video. I did this because I recently bought a Flex and I faced a number of challenges when trying to use it with Digimodes. So uh, I struggled to find any instructional videos or information online um, that was easy to understand and easy to follow. So after I cracked it, I thought, you know what, I'm going to do this uh, to help other people. So uh, these are the challenges that I faced. The cat port, um, now it's not a necessity, but it's a nice to have. Have the Digimode um, program control the frequency and control the PTT. Um, also, the, um, the ability to be able to share the cat port amongst a number of uh, different Digimode programs um, was a challenge. The other challenge as well was sound. So I've seen people putting their microphone next to the speakers and kind of doing it like that. But then when you've got noise going on in the room, that can affect things. And also it's not necessarily the proper way to do it. So I wanted to try and find a, a solution to be able to get the sound out of the flex into the app and equally back out of the app into the flex. So um, this is my scenario. I've got a flex 3000. I run the Power SDR software. I use FL Digi for Digimodes and also WSJTX and I really like Log for OM from a login perspective. So these are the applications that I'm going to be demonstrating. Um, app Control Panel, DDU Tool, VSP Manager, Power Level Manager, OmniRig, and virtual audio cable. These are all applications that I use to achieve my goal. So with no further ado, let's get into it. Hope you enjoy. I, although I'm very, very new to amateur radio, I've been very keen to explore all sorts of different areas. And one of the areas that uh, I was looking at was Digimodes. So um, what I was keen to understand was how with only one COM port, um, could I interface many different programs um, for Digimodes to um, control that one COM port or CAT port um, for things like PTT and changing the frequency and things like that. So uh, I hunted high and low and spent many hours trying to find the best solution and I think I've found a good solution. And um, I thought I'd do this short video because there was nothing else really out there that was easy to understand and it talks you through how to set up the various bits of software um, and also as a reminder to me so that when I do need to rebuild my PC and reconfigure everything how I did it in the first place. Um, so I'm going to do this short video for you and hopefully you find it useful. I thought it would also be useful just to uh, show you my working conditions. So this is my office where my radio lives and I've got three monitors on a PC and uh, the left screen is the screen that I'll be demonstrating everything to you on and the other two screens are just where I'll be staging um, screens ready to display. So one of the first things I want to show you is, uh, is this bit of software that I downloaded from K9DUR and it's called App Control Panel and I particularly like this because what it does is it puts all of the startup executables um, that I use very often for my, my radio hobby in one place. Um, additionally, what it does is it means that it stops you from loading certain applications before you've loaded applications that um, that, that app relies on. So to give you an example here, DDU Till won't load, irrelevant of how many times I click it, until I've loaded Power SDR. So I've clicked on the Power SDR, that's now loading up, and then as soon as that's loaded, you will notice that other icons become um, available. So you'll notice that DDU Till now has gone white. So if I click on DDU Till, you'll notice that VSP Manager will then go white. DDUtil is just loading on the uh, the second screen, so I'll just bring that across and just show you that that's loaded. So there you go, there's DDUtil, and now I can load VSP Manager. 
But it's important that you do it in the right order because otherwise there's certain things that need to happen that won't have happened. Um, so now VSP Manager is loaded on the other screen and there it is. Um, I'll just show you how you configure this because it's really, really quite good actually. So simply right clicking um, allows you to set up the, the run line, the executable line of that particular application. And then you can also say either another application must be running before it to allow it to run or the complete opposite, another application must not be running and if it is, it won't let you load it. So it really is that simple. Um, that's the setup of it. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, as I say, that is, um, that is App Control Panel by K9DUR. Right, I'm now going to concentrate on talking you through um, the setting up of the various virtual COM ports. So there's a specific order that this needs to be done in, otherwise it won't work. So first of all, using the VSP Manager by K5FR, again, on Google, what we need to do is create a series of COM ports, uh, virtual COM ports, that is. So um, I've found that if we start off with a pair of COM ports um, from, uh, let's say, 8, and the corresponding COM port to that would be 9, create, don't worry about any uh, spurious messages that it gives you. Every time we press refresh here, you'll notice it uh, appearing in that window. So create 10, automatically it creates 11. Okay, there we go, there it is. And then 12, automatically 13. And 14, automatically 15. And let's just do one more, 16 and 17. Okay, so there are all of your virtual COM port pairs. Right, the next job is to use those pairs. So here we are in DDU2, and there's basically two things that we've got to do in here. So the first thing that we need to do is assign one of those pairs to connect the PowerSDR software to VSP Manager. So first of all, let's uh, go into the setup. Okay, so in here we've got legacy. So let's just choose one of these pairs. Let's choose number 10. That's quite a nice number. So let's assign port 10 to the PowerSDR software and, um, and then if I click refresh, there you go. So port 10 is now the DDU TIL software. And then what we need to do is load up PowerSDR and tell PowerSDR that it's going to be using um, COM port 10. We'll do that in a few minutes. Um, the other things that we need to do is assign these um, ports, these CAT ports, into these virtual ports. So let's say COM port 8 and also COM port 12 and also COM port 14 and also COM port 16. Okay, so again, if we click refresh, you'll see that DDU till now has taken control of one half of each of those virtual pairs. So let's come out of this. That's really all I use this for. I'm sure it's capable of a lot more things, but I don't use it. Let's untick that because I don't think we need that ticked. It loads up some kind of TCP server, which I'm sure is useful for HRD maybe, but I don't use it. So, uh, And I think that's about it. So let's just close that. And you can see that this information here isn't populated at the moment, but as soon as the flex, i.e. PowerSDR, is talking on COM port 11, then that will start to populate, which we'll do next. Right, let's load PowerSDR. And uh, there won't be a COM port set for the cat. So let's 
So first thing we need to do is go into the setup menu, go along to the cat, change that. So we're actually looking to assign it port number 11, which is the corresponding port to port 10, which is what we were told um, the other software just enable that. 9600 is fine. All of those are fine. Don't need to do anything on that. Now, for the purposes of control, um, most software um, accepts the TS2000 commands and so does PowerSDR. So I've set it to that. Click OK. Now what we should find in this software, ah, there we go, it's done it already. So it's now picking up the information from the Flex through PowerSDR. So that, that's a good sign, that shows that it's working a few. Right, I'll just tidy up the, uh, the desktop a little bit. Um, okay, so hopefully if we press refresh now, we should find that Comport 11 is populated by the Flex. And there it is, okay. So what we know now is that we have got CAT communications from the Flex through the PowerSDR software into the virtual COM port, let's call it the bank of virtual CAT COM ports, so that now when we um, assign um, one of these bits of uh, software, a CAT connection to the Flex, we'll be assigning it to one of these empty virtual CAT COM ports. So that's what we're going to do next. Just another quick tip before we move on. Um, number one, you can actually use App Control Panel to shut programs down. So if I want to shut down VSP Manager, simply by clicking on it, we'll actually close it down, as you can see. Um, however, here's a word of, word of warning. Um, if you do close down these two applications, then you will have no cat ports for your flex. So it's important to remember that you need to leave these open. And one of the things that you can do within App Control Panel is you can start it minimized. And that's what I do. Um, so literally you haven't got a, um, you know, a screen full of applications running. So, uh, so yeah, it's important that these two are still running um, before you open up any of your additional bits of software. Right, let's go ahead and open up FL Digi. And this is probably also a good time to show you this little application. I like this. This basically monitors the audio stream um, just so that I can see that uh, the right amount of audio is getting in or out of an application. Um, another nice little bit of software, Digital Level Meter uh, by Paul Marshall on darkwooddesigns.co.uk. All the details are on the screen. I've set this so that it loads up automatically um, with FL Digi. Um, I can close it if I want just by clicking there, but I find it quite useful. So um, I've already got um, uh, FL Digi configured with a COM port, but as you can see, it doesn't appear here, um, but it will now that I've loaded it up. So uh, let's just have a quick look at this. So this is what the configuration looks like under Rig Cat. I've got it set to Comport 13, TS2000, um, put a tick in the box that says use Rig Cat and also a tick in the box that says Cat command for PTT. Initialize, save, close it, refresh just to check and there it is. On port 13 and um, again just to uh, just to prove it works let's just start up the flex and hopefully by clicking the tune button that should put the flex into transmit and uh, well, yeah it should work there you go so the cat command works as a quick side note, I will be covering the audio and how we get the audio in and out um, a little bit later on in this tutorial. Right, let's continue by loading up WSJTX. Okay, we've got an error uh, message come up here telling us that the configuration is wrong, which is great. 
so let's just go to the configuration menu okay what we can see here is it's got a com port allocated that isn't correct so uh, oops There we go, so 14 is already assigned. So let's just assign it 15. Okay, tick the box that says, or the button that says cat. That's great. Uh, everything else is fine on there. TS2000 again, um, no change. So test cat, gone green, test PTT. Yep, that's perfect. OK, and again on VSP Manager, click Refresh, and now WSJTX has got port 15. So there you go, another, another success. Uh, another note here, um, there's nothing at all to stop you from assigning any of, any of these programs, for instance, um, the same port if you're not going to be using them at the same time. So for instance, um, I don't know, as an example, um, M1MM, okay, I use it so little it doesn't really matter, but there's a really good chance that I won't be using the M1MM at the same time as FLDG. So FLDG is assigned um, COM13, so if we close FLDG by clicking it there, and then refresh we've now got COM port 13 available to us. So we could now assign COM port 13 to N1MM. But just be aware, if you load them both up at the same time, you're going to have a problem. Right, I like to use a, a login software called Log4OM, uh, which I think is absolutely brilliant, and it's free. Um, now, in order to use that with the cat, uh, you need to use this little bit of software called OmniRig. And again, it's just a little bit of middleware that takes um, log for om and gives it a, a cat port. So again, familiar, TS2000, give it a COM port, COM9, COM9. And, and again, the VSP is just converting all of these COM ports into a capped connection into uh, the flex. So nothing very uh, unusual there. The last part of the puzzle in how to get things to talk in terms of Digimodes is the audio. So we don't need a TNC or, or any of that because we've got um, basically the flex, which is in effect a computer, and then we've got a, a PC running software. So we've got that communication already. But what we need is a way of getting the audio um, that's already in the computer kind of back out into the computer again. So we have to do that using a virtual audio cable. So um, so this is a bit of software that I did have to buy. It's only around about $25, I think, um, called Virtual Audio Cable. And, uh, and what this enables you to do is to create um, a couple of, um, a, a pair, let's call it, of, um, of virtual cables that will connect from, um, let's say, the Flex or PowerSDR to the other bit of software, i.e. Uh, WSJTX or FLDG. And it's really simple, you know, literally, um, you can download a trial, and if you like it, and if you hope, if you think it will do the job, then you just, um, you just buy it online, you download the full version, install it, and that's it, it works. So you, you just create a, a pair of cables, and these settings here are quite important um, from what I've read on the internet. All I'm trying to do, I haven't invented anything that I'm showing you, I'm trying to bring it all together in one usable place, and, uh, and hopefully make setting it up a lot easier than what I uh, encountered. So these settings are important, and also this setting is important, Everything else is as it is, um, out of the box, from what I can remember. Uh, tick line, um, and then every time that you, so you, you highlight a cable, change the settings, and then click set. 
and then highlight the other cable, change the settings and click set and that's it. If you find it won't set, try closing down all of the applications that you've got running that might be using these cables and then try doing it again. But perseverance will mean that it will work. And then hopefully what you should see when you've done that and you load up your, um, uh, your, your Windows sound audio devices, you should find that you've got another two um, cables. Um, just like you've got headphones and microphone and then inside let's say the software uh, audio okay virtual cable one is the input into the flex and virtual cable two is the output out of the flex so uh, if I now start up the flex what we should see in in the application here we've now got audio so just by changing the audio gain you can now see that that's moving okay. and also in Windows don't worry about the top one this is my microphone but in here again by turning it down it goes down and up so as you can see we've now got the audio coming out of the flex into Windows. So very, very simply, we can do the opposite to that in, let's say, FL Digi or in WSJTX by having the ability now to tell it to take its audio from one of the, or give its audio to one of these cables. I'll show you that next. Right, so uh, here's FL Digi and under sound card as you can see capture which is the audio coming out of the flex is cable 2 as you can see there uh, output cable 2 and the input is cable 1 that's it it really is as simple as that and that applies to FL Digi or, or WSJTX or, or any of those programs that needs the audio. Also, the uh, the peak level meter as well is, is a really good way of seeing whether you've got the right amount of audio going in. So, um, so let's just shut that down. Um, so, with um, with FL Digi, for instance, you've got no real way of seeing how much audio is going in there, and it's very, very easy to overload it, and then you end up receiving nothing. So, in the Flex or in Power SDR, what I like to try and do is, um, is turn it down here, and as you can see, the levels are dropping here, and I like to try and keep it below the orange, so yeah, kind of around about there. And that's where I tend to find I get the best reception. Um, so yeah, I'll just load up. Um, I'll just load up uh, WSJTX as well, and just show you that. Okay, I had to find the uh, the app control bar. So let's just load up WSJTX. Here it is. And. Um, Oops, settings, audio again, Ooh, output, that should be virtual cable one, and we've got the input, okay, that's all correct. Um, now, also, let's just have a look at this. So, if I've done this properly, by changing here the band, we should see up here the radio will change its frequency as well. Good, that, that just means that the cat's working, so that's great. Well, thank you very much for making it to the end. Um, I know it was 23 minutes long, but hopefully it was a subject that um, I covered okay and you understood it. And um, yeah, please feel free to like and, and to subscribe to my channel. I enjoy doing this and I enjoy helping people just because um, it's an interesting hobby. So I look forward to seeing you again. Take care. Bye-bye.